One of my favorite things about math counts is that most of the problems can't be solved by just jamming numbers in some formula. You have to think about the problems first. And that's really cool, because that whole jamming numbers in a formula thing, that's what computers are for. And they're way better at it than we are. So today we're going to talk about one of my favorite think about it strategies. Find a pattern and prove the pattern works. We're going to try it on this problem right here. We've got a sequence, 1, 3, 4, 7, in which after the first two terms, each term is the sum of the two terms before it. And our goal is to find out how many of the first hundred terms of this sequence are multiples of 5. I don't see any multiples of 5 yet. Maybe we keep going. So the first step, of course, is just play with it a little bit, and then we'll look for a pattern. So we start off with 1 and 3. We added 1 and 3, we got 4. 3 and 4, we get 7. 4 and 7, we get 11. 7 and 11, we get 18. 11 and 18, we get 29. We can keep on going, right? We can just list out all 100. 18 and 29 is... 47, of course, that's what a computer would do, and we don't want to just be computers. 47, 76 gives us 123 because being a computer is boring. Oh, boy. So we're going to stop there and start looking for a pattern. We're looking for multiples of 5. Still don't see any multiples of 5. Multiples of 5 means it ends in a 0 or ends in a 5. Now, zero is no fives, but that gets us thinking, well, maybe we just look at the last digits. 1, 3, 4, 7, 1, 8. 9, 7, another 7, 6, 3. I still don't see any patterns, but what we care about really is multiples of 5. Multiples of 5. So instead of thinking about just the last digit, let's think about where these things are relative to multiples of 5. We're going to think about remainders. Look at each of these numbers when you divide by 5, what's the remainder? We have a 1 and a 3 and a 4. 7 divided by 5, 2 is remainder. 11 divided by 5 gives you 1 as a remainder. 3, then 4, then 2, then 1, then... Th I see a pattern now. 1, 3, 4, 2, 1, 3, 4, 2. So we've taken care of step 1. We found a pattern. But now we need to take care of step 2. Let's figure out why this pattern works. So then we know for sure it'll continue, and then we know the answer is 0, and then we can move on. So let's think about what happens when you add a number that's 1 more than a multiple of 5 to a number that's 3 more than a multiple of 5. Well, the two multiple of 5s add up to another multiple of 5. And your 1 extra and your 3 extra give you 4 extra. It gives you 4 more than a multiple of 5. A number with remainder 4 when it's divided by 5. What happens when we add a number with remainder 3? 3 more than a multiple of 5 to a number that's 4 more than a multiple of 5. Again, our two multiples of 5 add up to another multiple of 5. And we take our 3 extra and our 4 extra, and that gives us 7 extra. So we're 7 more than a multiple of 5. But we can take 5 of that 7 extra and put it with our multiple of 5 and get another multiple of 5. And now we're just 2 more than a multiple of 5. Get a number with remainder 2 when divided by 5. Same thing when we add a number that's 4 more than a multiple of 5 to a number that's 2 more than a multiple of 5. We get a number that's 6 more than a multiple of 5. Move forward another multiple of 5. Now we're only 1 more than a multiple of 5. And sure enough, we see why this, why this pattern continues, because 2 and 1, 2 more than a multiple of 5, 1 more than a multiple of 5, because it's 3 more than a multiple of 5, and now we're doing the same thing over again. 1 and the 3 gives us the 4. The 3 and the 4, 3 more than a multiple of 5, 4 more than a multiple of 5 gives us 7 more than a multiple of 5, otherwise known as 2 more than a multiple of 5. 4 and 2 gives us 1. 2 and 1 gives us 3. And now we're repeating ourselves again and again. And again, and we see that we will never hit a zero in this pattern. So when we finally hit a zero is when we write down the answer. There are zero multiples of five in the first hundred terms. Now let's take this strategy on to a problem with a lot more numbers in it. All right, so we've got these square grids here, and we can see the pattern of the numbers in the grids. And we want the sum of the numbers in the grid that's sitting out at stage seven. Well, now we could just draw the grid and add up the numbers. It's not very fun, not very sporting either. And we could get a little clever about adding up the numbers. I mean, we can just add them up column by column, and that, that would be pretty simple too, but I don't want to do that. I want to find something a little more clever. We're going to find a pattern, figure out why the pattern works, solve the problem. So stage one, we know that this sum is one. That was simple. Stage two, the one and two gives us three. The two and three gives us five. The three and five gives us eight. Stage 3, we don't even have to add them up. They tell us it's 27. I'm going to choose to trust them. 
Then we get to stage four. All right, we're gonna have to add these up now. Just add them up column by column. One through four, that gives us 10. Now the next column over, well, each number's one more than the number to the left of it. So this whole column's gonna be four more than the column to the left of it. Gives us 14, and then 18, and then 22. So to add these are nice and e evenly spaced out numbers. So I'm gonna take the ones on the ends. 10 and 22 give us 32. 14 and 18 also gives us 32. And this number comes out to be just what I bet you guessed it would be. 64. 1, 8, 27, 64. Now we see the pattern. We've got cubes. So we figure the answer is just going to be 7 cubed. Now before we go ahead and multiply that out and write the answer down, let's figure out what's going on here. Why are these coming out to be cubes? Well, the first one's not very interesting, so that's just 1, but this 8. Why does the sum of these numbers come out to be 2 cubed? Is it just a coincidence? Well, now let's look back at how I added these numbers. They were nice and evenly spaced out, so I kind of used that symmetry. I took the one on the ends, and I took the ones in the middle there. They had the same sum. They averaged out to right in the middle. Well, I've got some symmetry here as well. So I'm going to think about everything relative to the middle, just like I did over there. 1 and 3, well, they averaged 2. 2 and 2, well, they averaged to 2. So I've got four numbers in this grid. It's two squared numbers in this grid because it's a two by two grid, the average to two. So the sum of all those numbers has to be two squared times two, which is two cubed. Well, now let's look at the next grid. Same thing, nice and equally spaced out numbers here. One and five, average to three. Two and the four, average to three. Three and three, average to three. Two and four, average to three. So I've, here I've got three squared numbers in the grid, because it's a three by three grid. They average to three. So their sum has to be 3 squared times 3, 3 cubed. Same game over here. Take the ones at the end. 1 and 7 average to 4. 2 and 6 average to 4. Average to 4, 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 average to 4. So now I've got 4 squared numbers that average to 4. So the sum of all those numbers, 4 squared times 4, is 64. And we can do the same thing in our 7 by 7 grid out here on stage 7. You take the ones in the corner, they're going to average to 7. Average to 7, average to 7, on and on and on. So you're going to have a grid of seven squared numbers that average to seven. So there's sum of all those numbers is going to be seven squared times seven. And while you may have that memorized, but I'm too old to memorize those things. Seven squared is 49. That's 50 minus one times seven. That gives me 50 times seven is 350 minus one times seven. That's seven. Gives us 343. So we solved another problem with our key strategy. Find a pattern, then prove your pattern works. Now on the countdown round, eh, I'll let you go with skipping step two.